your company is having problems with a batch of bolts stripping as they are tightened to specific torque levels. You are given samples of the bolts as well as examples from prior batches that perform adequately. Your objective is to determine the metallurgical factors that may be contributing to this change in performance. Metallographic techniques permit the examination of the microstructure of engineering materials. The microstructure may consist of various phases, grains, grain boundaries, dislocations, fibers, particles, voids, cracks, etc. Since mechanical properties are determined by the microstructure, metallography is a valuable tool in analyzing novel materials and in determining the cause of failures of structures. There are a number of methods for determining the average grain size in a polished and etched metallographic specimen. You have the ASTM grain size, direct comparison with standards, measurements of average grain diameter, the Jeffries method, and the alternative method. Each one has its own advantage and disadvantages, but you can use these five methods to measure the grain size of any metal sample given. After finding the grain size of each of the bolts, you will then determine how does the hardness of each bolt relates to their grain size. After doing this, you'll be able to make a better conclusion as to what the company should do in regards of their failing bolts. In your memo, you are to determine the metallurgical differences between the failing and adequate bolts and report on the likely source of the problem and recommend an appropriate action. You should include hardness data and graphical results, micrographs, grain size data, and results by at least two methods and any other relevant information uh, and observations that support your findings. So, <clears throat> uh, we need to prep our samples before placing them in the mounting press. And what we need to do is take out a small section, a uh, quarter of an inch off of the bolt itself or each of the two bolts that you do have. We're going to place them in the clamp. Make sure that they're clamped down all the way. We need to verify just how much of a piece we do need. So I'm going to adjust it to the length that I do need. I'm going to clamp it down, double check and verify that it's an approximation of about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to lift the handle up for the cutting wheel. I'm going to close the machine, the abrasive cutting wheel. I'm going to turn it on by flipping the switch on the back right hand side. We have some power. I'm going to hold the handle just because the initial jolt of the motor starting uh, the cutting wheel is going to jolt it a little bit. We start, we want to be sure that there is coolant or fluid always flowing before and after the cut. We will never cut a sample or any anything inside the abrasive cutting wheel without the fluid or coolant. So once we have that, I'm going to go ahead and lower the cutting wheel in a slow manner or fashion. We, we don't want to do this too quickly until we start feeling some resistance and we hear an audible sound of a cutting, of cutting occurring. We have cutting occurring. I'm gonna go ahead and place just a little bit of light pressure on the handle. I don't wanna push too hard. I don't wanna slam the cutting wheel into the, the clamp either once we get through the bolt. You can feel the resistance lessen. You can hear the audible sound once we're already close to the end. Sounds like we're all the way through. I heard the sample fall. I'm gonna go ahead and raise the cutting wheel. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna hold the handle as I push stop. It's gonna jolt a little bit. Once we're done, we can open up the hood all the way. We can remove our sample from the clamp and we can fish out our um, specimen that was cut off. So we have our, or the samples that you've already created. They're about even height, they're close enough. What we wanna do is we wanna place them on the 
mounting platform. We're gonna want to choose one that is pretty flat. I know a lot of these are pretty beaten up, but choose one that's the flattest that we can find that doesn't have very much of a deformation. So we're going to place our samples or we're going to spread them apart just a tiny bit. We're going to place the mold cylinder over the first platform. If your samples move, you can just readjust them. We'll place the mold over. We're going to grab a either a couple scoops or just one scoop of the polymer resin. And what you want to do is you want to fill it up to the first part you want to fill up to where you cover your samples, just enough to cover them. We don't want to go too heavy on this material, but just enough to cover initially. Alright, so I just covered just enough to cover the top of them. I'm just going to add just a little bit more and an even coat all the way around just so that there's enough material or back to it to where we don't fracture the puck or the mold itself when their samples come out, sliding out. So just enough to initially cover and then just a little bit more. I'll return the rest. I'll place the remaining mold disc onto the top, press it down to where it compacts the resin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the mold specimen but holding the bottom as I move it so the bottom doesn't fall out and all the resin and sample doesn't slide out. I'm going to place it on the mounting press. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the heating element. And actually I should have placed the heating element in prior. Just didn't do that. Get the heating element in its location. I'm going to slide it up into its holding spot. I'm going to slide the mount back in and place the heating element over the mold. Make sure that our valve is tight for our, the hydraulic press. We're going to go ahead and raise the press with the mold. Remember we need to hold at the preload, what did it say, for five minutes? The reason that we do that is because we need to make sure that one, the hydraulic mounting press is good. If it's not holding a constant pressure, then we're not gonna be able to hold at our required uh, PSI. All right, so we're gonna slide this up, make sure not to bang that metal cylinder as we enter the mounting press. As we get a little bit closer, we're going to feel some resistance. We're going to watch the needle approach the preload phase. There's a little bit of pressure. It's building. All right, so just apply enough pressure to hold at the preload. And it said hold it for five five minutes, right? So we're gonna hold that preload for five minutes. The valve is closed. We'll give it some time to uh, go through the process. Once we go through the five minutes, we're gonna raise the pressure to approximately three to four thousand psi between the two circular, we want to hold the needle between the two uh, semicircles 
and hold that pressure for about 20 minutes then we can remove our sample. Once you've already held your sample at the temperature and the correct pressure, we're going to release it by opening the valve. It's going to lower the press. We'll remove the heating element by placing it in its holding or holder. As we do that, we'll place the fins on to help cool the mold a lot quicker. As we as it cools, we should get to the point where we can be able to take out our mold. We do want to wear gloves just in case there's any more residual temperature coming off of it. We'll go ahead and apply the, or close the valve on the press. We're going to raise the press and punch out our sample with this rod. So the first rod was to compress it. The second rod is to punch it out. There's a hole here at the bottom that is going to slide out. We're just going to catch it with our hand. Obviously, we're in the gloves to safety first. We don't know how what the temperature is going to be like. Fill in the pressure. Sometimes all three will slide out at once. Sometimes only one will slide out at a, one will slide out at a time. Just varies. Just prepare to catch multiple sets of coupons that are gonna. There's the first one that slid out. I'm gonna push it on the tin. Oh, and the last two came out. So I'm gonna go ahead and relieve the, open up the valve, release the pressure. We have the. coupon. Again, we don't know what the temperature is. Uh, we're just going to leave it as is for right now just before we try to touch it with our hands. Uh, a good sample is going to be where we cannot see the surface of the bolts on both ends. It's only on one end that you're going to see the sample. So this is a good sample. It's thick enough where it's going to hold the samples in, especially when you do your testing. You're not going to have your puck fall apart. Uh, during any of the process that you're going to be going through next.